And now, and now, the Kill or Be Killed podcast with Damien Ross, founder and master instructor of the Self Defense Company. So, do they make you guys uh, hand in all your guns yet? Uh, no, we don't actually have to hand them in. I'm like quote unquote grandfathered in, so they're not doing anything to me at this point. It's just you can't buy new um, or like you go to, you you can go to the gun. You can't buy any guns in any gun store. I cannot go and buy any um, at this point non or any restricted firearms. Like I can still go buy a fucking shotgun right now, but I can't go buy anything restricted. So you can't buy you can buy a hunting rifle. Yes, as far as I know, yes. There's been no change to that. Of course, things are fucking changing here all the time. So right, uh, you can buy a handgun. Um, no, it's handgun is restricted. No. I mean, are people losing their minds? George is in Canada, by the way, if you don't. Yeah. Know. Yeah. You know what? We surprisingly haven't heard much of it because of, you know, the other nonsense that's been, you know, talked, all the other bits of nonsense that's constantly fucking talked about, you know, like the fucking COVID in our 8,000th wave and fucking monkey pox now, which is exciting. Yeah. There's lots of, lots of distractions. Our uh, prime minister's new haircut. I don't know if you saw that. I did. Yeah, the fucking quote, the, the Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, wonderful. So fucking proud to be Canadian. When's uh, when's the election? Oh shit, I don't even know. We just had the election uh, not too long ago, so he's in. I think for a couple more years. Oh. Yeah. You know, it's, see, the the one thing that you guys can. I mean, you're like one eighth the size population of the United States. One, two. The one thing, as far as like. Um, protection from i mean look let's face it the u.s is the big swinging dick and yep. anything in north america i mean it's not like you guys are going to be vulnerable what's going to happen is just crime oh yeah when you got when you guys fuck up we're going to get bombed first <laughs> right right and, <laughs> you know i got an interesting email from a guy from australia talking about what's happening there is like the violence is still you know they again they have very strict gun laws yes. the violence is still real uh, he goes, besides having, you know, illegal arms coming in, uh, they've got, you know, new uh, print, 3D printer guns are big. Um, and they're still using, like, baseball bats and edge weapons and shit like that. He goes, but the gun violence is still happening. He goes, it's it's not, it hasn't stopped. And, you know, when, so a couple things happen. One, when you do this shit, I mean, you've got, um <sighs> It's an argument that's been made a thousand times, but this is the facts. All right. So, you know, when you do a new law, like people like us obey the law. Yep. Right? The exactly. people that don't obey the law are criminals. Criminals break the law. They don't give a shit. And they have stiffer fines and stiffer penalties for criminals who break the law. So what actually winds up happening is they don't put guys looking like us in jail. They put lower income people that they're trying to kowtow to every strict gun law, every strict drug law affects more you know of the impoverished you know the, the below the poverty line you know again we would say typically i mean i hate the, you know look the reality is what you know those people in these in these uh, low income distressed areas that use crime as a way of life you know they're the ones that are getting the stiffer sentences so they think they're imposing it on me and you think you're putting these laws because a handful of 18 year old kids lose their fucking minds exactly right so now you want the government to take care of you well how well did the government do the job in uvalde right and then they show the guys who are actually in there while the massacre is happening like um you know they're, they're they're not engaging they're standing in the hallway and one guy you they show me he's cleans his hands with hand sanitizer now people were freaking out about that and i'm going to tell you um that it was probably a nervous stress reaction like yep. he saw it and he just grabbed it and did it i mean when, when people don't realize when you're under like extreme stress you do some bizarre things absolutely like you forget to do stuff this is why like even shit like with the fire department when we're going on calls and i'm like it's a bullshit call and you know it's a bullshit call tell me what put your hood on get dressed like you're going to a fire because when we actually have a fire you will forget shit yeah. and you will be fucking useless if you don't put your hood on guess what you're a fucking house plant you just sit by the house okay yeah. you're not going in 
you're, you know, that's what you're doing. You know, you don't put, put your gloves on. You don't do, you know I mean? Shit where you were like, dude, you cannot function without the shit. Right. So, you know, I mean, they constantly are like, you know, trying to, um, you know, take away the problem like they do with drugs. Exactly. And how swimmingly well is that going? And you, that's, yeah, yeah. How's, how's that worked out? Exactly. And that's drugs. All right. So you take away firearms, especially in the U.S., where you know people think you're always firearms self defense. Firearms primarily was to keep the government in check. And they talk about assault weapons and AR-15. I'm like assholes. The musket, you know, they're like, oh, you had muskets. I'm like, the musket was the AR-15 of the day. Right. So it was the same that citizens had the same exact technology as the military. Right. So you've got the, um, you know, you've got, you know, they, and then I'll say, well, it's not like all of a sudden like automatic weapons and assault weapon, I hate to say armalite weapons because the assault weapon is a, it's not a, an accurate term. So right. rifles and weapons of, uh, of war and self-defense all of a sudden popped out of fucking thin air. Like we've had the first Continental Congress saw automatic weapons. Uh, they, they knew they were, they were going to have cartridge weapons. They knew what was happening and it was evolving and they've had, it was fine up until, you know, Columbine. Right. Yeah. So, and now also what's happening. And let me ask you this about Canada, about the laws. Like if you, let's say you are, a, um, you carry a lot of cash mm -hmm. or jewelry. Can you apply for a special concealed carry permit? No, you can't. There's only there's only certain jobs that will allow for it. Like you know, obviously the police. Um, there's certain security professionals, like in the case of Brinks, that that can do that kind of thing. But other than that, it is not going out to any civilians. Really? So. Yeah. Like if you're a celebrity, you can't get one. Correct. Okay. I mean, do do they carry? Yeah, fucking probably. But uh, well, to the best of my what? knowledge, yeah, you are very, very, very limited. We have very, very tight gun laws here. Like very tight gun laws. <laughs> I'd be interested again. See what's happening as far as crime. You know, moving forward. Um. Yeah, because so. The states, like when I, you know, when I was doing bodyguarding, I could, I could, you know, I, I had, you know, my life is at risk. Oh, I had a need I could carry only when working, you know, in New York and New Jersey alike, New York City, not New York State. New York State was concealed carry. Uh, they had, um, uh, you could only have a special need. So if you're, you know, carrying a lot, like business, like jewelry, cash, or you're a celebrity, which means you have this elite status of having a firearm. And they're even doing the same shit, the same shit now. It's not like cheap. So I'm going through the CCW course. It's like, you know, 150 bucks, uh, four hours training qualification uh, for each weapon you want to carry. Okay. Right. So, you know, the problem is it's like, you know, I'm, obviously I'm going to carry, I'm making sure my insurance covers me. Um, and obviously I'm not going to be drinking when I'm carrying and all that other stuff. I mean, I'm treating it like it's, you know, that's how you treat it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so, but I, I mean, I can do it at the time and I've got the means and I've access, but you know, it's like, I'm not a single mother working two jobs in Camden. That's right. You know, I mean, does she, is she going to spend a couple hundred bucks to get certified to do it? I hope so but you're not making it accessible for her. And while I feel everyone needs it, she needs it more than I do. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and this is the problem and this is what, you know, what people don't realize. I mean, the people in the high crime areas who are exposed to violence and experience violence on a weekly basis, you know, they need to have access to protection and training. One. So, Getting back to Valde, let me see if I can find that uh, video. Video. 
Okay, officers check for Okay, here we go. Um, let's see if uh, it's coming up. Bear with me. I found it. Okay, so they got some closed circuit TV from the school. Um, just uh, one moment. It's coming up. Yay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, this is, you know, officers um, that responded to the Uvalde shooting are in the school. Uh, the gunman is in the classroom. They do not, you know, you'll see what's going on. And the only thing they should be doing, by the way, is um, storm in the castle. I mean, that's every, um, this is every active shooter training I've ever heard of or been a part of. Um, let me just share a window. Uh, sure. Okay. Do you see this? Yeah, uh, it's starting to open. Yep. Okay. There cool. we go. Okay. So let's go. I'll just close it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's the gunman. Okay. Look at him, dude. They are, that's, you know, they got weapons, they got shields, they got helmets, they're freaking ready to go. You yeah. got one, two, three, four, five, six dudes right there. Nice. Again, we're looking at, we're looking at nervous habits too. Okay. So, you know, this is what people do right and these guys are bugging out yeah i mean it's like weekend warrior kind of shit. yeah you know so just uh, yeah so this is your government at work so these are the guys that are going to respond and protect you <laughs> right so this is what you have when you know the only solution to this is going to start treating our schools like airports yep that's it i mean this is the world we live in it's not going away so let's make it happen i mean people don't want to see a metal detector they don't want to see someone really trained there not an off-duty fucking cop not a fucking guy retired have an organization of protectors yes okay so you can make it a division of homeland security where you get dudes that let me roll this back a little bit so there's a special on netflix now about db cooper and are you familiar with who this guy was no no okay so he's kind of like this folklore of a legend guy he hijacked a plane in the 70s 1972 got 250,000 250 like 200 grand and then jumped out the back of the plane at like he dropped it down i want to say 10,000 feet i could be wrong but there's a tail exit on the on that model plane so what he did was he said he had a bomb he went on the plane with a bomb told it was like a it was like an hour long flight total what he was on it was like from like seattle to like I don't know if there's another part of Portland, Oregon or some shit, right? Mm -hmm. So they land the plane, they get everybody off the plane except the flight crew, and then they get that back up, right? After they give them, after he, you know, they're like, give me the money, I'm releasing everybody, and then the flight crew and D.B. Cooper go up. He hits a certain point over New Mexico, Scott, you know, has the pilot bring the plane down, exits the plane, never found him, right? So he becomes this, like, you know, legend. But the late 70s and early 80s it was like hijacking was a common occurrence because you could just literally walk into an airport and buy your ticket and get on the plane like it was a bus yes so 
all the fire, the metal detector, Homeland Security, nothing was there. And then it was fine. And you would hide people be hijacking planes to Cuba on a regular basis. Planes got hijacked regularly. So then what happened? They started putting in precautions in the airport, right? Great. Skyjackings go down. 9-11 hits. Then they we amp it up. We put air marshals on every flight, right? Armed cops on every flight. And then we clamp down on what you can bring into the fucking what you can bring into the to the airport. So, you know, it's been over 20 years and we haven't had an incident. Think about that. 2001 to now, no plane has been taken over. No one's flown it into a building. Nothing. Yeah. So what about doing the same thing in our schools? Again, I know because it involves children, we want to wish it away. We don't want to see an armed guard and a metal detector, you know, but the reality is we have to start treating our schools like airports. It is what it is. Yeah. When I was a little kid, they stopped at some point. But I remember like air raid sirens and getting under a desk. It was nuclear war. Mm -hmm. Not that that was going to do anything, but you know, you had the threat of nuclear war. Um, we don't really, even though we still have it, but we really don't think about it or talk about it. That's right. You know, so what we need to do is, you know, we've got guys coming out of the military, you know, operators that are, you know, retired and looking for jobs you know you have these guys and you know it should be a federal or state agency right and then it should, you know to make sure that you've got a highly vetted officer yes. like a professor you know preferably someone with special operations experience um you get these guys and girls, well, a girl would be a special operator, but anyway, you get these people that you rotate, right? It's not like it's someone that you live in, that you live in the community. What you do is you, you have somebody that's like, okay, I'm here for six months, eight months in the school year. And then you rotate out. Yeah. Right. So what you don't want is somebody who gets like uber familiar with everybody that they work with. Yes. The kids. Right, because then it's like, oh, you know, someone's propping the door open, someone's doing that. No, you do not want to have somebody that's familiar with that. With, yeah, that becomes you know comfortable and complacent. That's right. Obviously, metal detectors in the main entrance with a bulletproof vestibule. A lot of schools, all our schools around here have them. Uh, all the alarm systems up, working and locked down, so that when a door is open or propped open. An alarm sounds with a location mm -hmm. and then it gets treated as okay we're you know we fly to that spot because what you don't want to do is have a kid prop open the door for somebody or let somebody in which has happened i mean one of my best friend's kids he's got twin daughters they're gorgeous they graduated a couple years ago they go by they want to visit a teacher they didn't feel like going through security so they went on the side knocked on the door of course some kid is going to let them in yeah exactly <laughs> who would it yeah. Right, so you know, he lets them in, they get in to see the teacher. I'm like, that's a freaking problem. So, finally, you know, putting personal body armor kits with trauma bags in every classroom. So, yeah, and this is what I envision for the bodyguard is that alarm goes off, fire alarm, teachers just push the backpack on, walks the kids out, mm -hmm. right? So, at least they have something, you know, an option. For the kids, you know, and allow the kids to have armor with them in their backpacks with, them. you know, I mean, some people, I get people posting, well, they're not allowed to take the backs in school. I'm like, change this policy, moron. Exactly. You know, I'm like, I, really? Oh, no, they told me no, so I can't do it. I'm like, you need to go to your fucking school board. Be like, look, my kid's getting a backpack and he's bringing it in. He's bringing it to school, period. Done. You know, I mean, what are they going to tell you? No. Why? Because he's got a bag with him. My kid carries his backpack to every class. He doesn't even go in his locker. I mean, none of them really use lockers anymore. So, you know, yeah, it's, you know, and, and really that's, that's kind of it. You know, you also set up, you know, set up the, um, like, uh, you can, you know, set up strategic like planters and barricades. So, 
you know, no one can like drive through, you know, the front, you know, take a, take a car, drive through and all that shit. But if you simply, simply had the school, you know, lockdown secure, had a real fucking armed presence there and, you know, shit uh, allowed body armor kits and trauma bags in each of the classrooms. I mean, that would be all you would need. Yeah, it would like, it would make a difference. And then when there's an unscheduled fire alarm, there's got to be a massive police presence, and that's it. I mean, you have to because then so again, what happens is, you know, and this is where the armor comes in too for the kids. So they're out, so they get out of the school because again, if, I don't know if you know who's listening to this, but typically what happens, um, they would like a, a shooter will go in and pull the fire alarm, get a ton of people in the, uh, you know, get create a kill funnel in the hallways and just start going to town. If they can, I mean, this guy went into, got access to a classroom and went in there. So, um, yeah, it, it's, you know, these people are, you've got to really, you know, start treating these things like, um, you know, little mini airports. And I, I get, you know, it's frustrating given, you know, what we do is to just hear the bullshit rhetoric and people are just taking the guns away. Why aren't you focused on securing the the place of learning? Yes. You know, I, I don't, it's what it is. Like you said before, this is what, this is what we got to do now. That's it. Right. I mean, there's more guns than people in the U S yes. Right. And you would think for the amount of firearms, there'd be more crap going off. But most of it is still in, you know, specific areas. Yep. Right. Um, the problem is active, you know, mass, mass murder happens more than school fire. Yep. A lot more. We haven't had a fatality in school fire since 1954 or some shit like that. So, you know, I mean, when are we going to really start taking this seriously? You know, how many kids have to die? you know, or be injured before we're like, okay, you know what? Let's stop fucking around with this. And let's not, you know, let's not hire fucking Barney Fife to fucking <laughs> Barney yes. Fife kids was a goofy cop from a kid. <laughs> all right. right. So, you know, let's not hire this weak ass people. You know, when you watch it, dude, you know, and I said, like, I look at the Uvalde thing and like, I know cops who are fucking cops. Right, they train, they keep themselves in shape, they take their job seriously. They are the minority. Yes. You know, but I bet every one of these cops will be like, you know, oh yeah, well, you know, I put my life on the line. Oh, yeah, bullshit. Right. You know, if you really took your job seriously, you take yourself seriously and keep your skill set up, keep yourself in shape, and look like something when you come out of the car. <laughs> yep. You know, all those guys, a lot of those guys in the video, don't look, you know, they're just sitting around doing nothing. How can you be sitting around? You know, every one of them should be in jail. I'm sorry. I mean, you know, the crap that happened with, with George Floyd, as tragic and awful uh, as it was, you know, we had one guy held accountable for loss of life. Now, how about these guys for not doing their freaking job? Exactly. You know, I, I don't. I don't understand, you know, yet. I mean, I know there's people protesting down there, but what about the rest of the world? You know, I, I just don't, um, I don't know, man. You know, people keep thinking that the fucking government's going to help them. Government does not give a shit. No. So even if they made outlawed all guns and they came, they'd have to come to your house, confiscate your guns. And then, you know, how many people, are going to just bury their weapons someplace on their yard. Exactly. So what are you going to do? Scrape the earth to pull all these guns, you know, pull the guns away. <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? And to think that, you know, it's like, Oh, you know, it can't happen here. You know, Russia, Nazi Germany, you know, all these things, they can happen here. What is the question I ask you is, what is the mechanism by which it can't happen here? Yeah. Right. So why can't it happen here? What? 
I mean, we just have what makes, you know, again, uh, Canada is founded in the reflection of the U.S., right? They're very similar. So even though you guys are still under the, are you guys still under uh, Britain or France or, are you guys, are you guys independent? I got a, uh, I got a train going by. <laughs> Okay, nice. Um, because I know I, I realized Australia was still under British rule. So you guys are a parliament, but are you independent from? Are you independent from? Are, are are you guys? Is Canada independent, or is it connected to France? Yeah, we're we're. Uh, I, I believe we are actually independent. Yes. Okay. Because some of these places, like I said, Australia is still under British rule. I mean, there's a lot that are still, you know, dealing with monarchy and crap like that. So, you know, it's important that, you know, now that we're, you know, we've gone through and seen what happened with COVID with the emergency use, you know, laws and all the other shit. You're like, holy crap, man. You know, I, I didn't think they could do that. Right. But now they've also demonstrated, well, if it's for your own good, we'll be able to do take all these freedoms away. So now we're like, oh, no, assault weapons bad. I can't. God damn. I keep saying assault weapon. Like, you know, well, we have to because that's what we're talking about. But they, um, you know, these are bad. So we're taking them away from you. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I just uh, I don't know, man. I am. um yeah, I hope. I mean, I'm glad that you know the the Second Amendment is uh, you know alive and well in the U.S. and we're waking up at least uh, to it. And um, you know, there's only 43 states have concealed carry, right? So you know, seven don't. I mean, that's it. It's not like, you know, people that because I you know if you like I live in one of those non-concealed carry states. Well, not anymore. So, um, they, uh, you know, people don't understand that it's just, you know, we got, you know, millions and millions of people walking around with firearms that are trained and they don't fucking kill each other. Yeah. There's the anecdotal, uh, you know, guy getting a road rage accident, you know, shit like that and does something stupid. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's going to happen. Um, but again, the overall benefit from, you know, an armed, polite and trained society and again, you're really into guns, like for the most part of like you take this shit seriously and you, you know, you, tr you know, you train, you, uh, you know, keep it secure and you don't fuck around. I mean, exactly. you know, so, and again, it's, you know, people, you know, it's, it's actually in our constitution, it's a fucking right. It's not a privilege. Driving is a privilege. Owning a firearm is a right. And you know, the other thing that I thought was interesting as I sit here, I'm like, you know, as I'm like getting shit just popping in my head, I'm like, you know, I mean, look, we're only, this country's only around 200 years, give or take, right? 250, whatever the hell it is. So um, that's like a fraction of the time compared to like the Roman Empire, which was like almost a thousand years. Mm -hmm. You know, Greek Empire, um, Ottoman Empire, you know, I mean, shit. And we're the first country that wasn't that wasn't a former monarchy. So we're basically an intellectual exercise, right? By some guys who could have easily, you know, been like, ah, fuck it. Uh, what part you want? What part you want? All right, let's just do the same shit we're doing. Fuck those guys. But yeah, now we're in charge now. Yeah. Right? But they did it. I mean, it's pretty freaking incredible. I don't keep shitting on them. And yes, you know, I'm like, it's funny. Uh, you know, again, you know, they talk about like, you know, I'm sure you've, you've heard, you know, make America great again. Yep. You know, and I'm like, well, when was that? Right. Was it great for in the fifties? What if I was black? Right. <laughs> you know, what if I was homosexual? You know what I mean? When is it, when was it great for me? Yeah. And what right. if you're a black homosexual like Jesus? <laughs> right. So when, you know, and so it's like, let's say make America greater, right? Yeah. Or let's just make it better, make Canada greater. It's like, what are we doing? I think, you know, I think obviously at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. We all want to be safe, 
right? We don't want to be able to pursue our dreams and, you know, we don't want to be stressed out and desperate. Now these are lofty goals, but that's what we want. And I think we have to continue to look at what's really driving, you know, what's really driving the, um, you know, the numbers. I mean, you have to, like you take out, like you heard just one statistic. I'm like, you take out like Illinois and uh, Minnesota and one other state where they're big cities that are, you know, I hate to say democratic, but they are the strict gun control laws. We go from like number out of 192 countries, we go from like number three in gun violence per capita down to like 190, you know, just something insane like that. Yeah. So, I mean, it can be done. And, you know, I think the more, you know, respect we have for each other, the more respect we have for human life and the more opportunities you know, in these areas. And look, I mean, I didn't even, we're not even scratching on the mental health issue now, which now is a large component of what the gun situation is. Absolutely. You know, so they are, um, they're getting, uh, you know, like now I just, I put in for um, another uh, couple more gun permits. So it works here in jersey is like you've got to uh you got to apply for a permit to purchase a handgun like i could go buy a rifle i have a national firearms id card so i yep. can go get any rifle right um but if i want to purchase a handgun i have to apply for a separate permit for each and now it's going back to um they they do mental health checks in like local hospitals oh wow to see huh. checked in i mean now here's the th this is what's straight it's like what if I'm just depressed? What if I'm stressed? What if I'm this? What if I'm that? I mean, who is, again, there's another thing happening there where who is, who is the gatekeeper on that? What are the criteria by which that's, you know, what's that standard and who yeah. sets that standard? So while you say like, you know, we'll say, okay, yeah, you can, you can get a firearm, but then it's like, yeah, okay. But then it's like, you've got this part of bureaucracy that can tell you no. That is an unelected, appointed official who is telling you, you who's now all of a sudden in charge of the shit. That's right. Right. So, you know, we also, it was funny because I, again, I went down there, I was talking to our local uh, police officer who's a firearms guy. And he's like, yeah, he goes, by the way, he goes, you got to take a safety course with this. He goes, but they don't, they didn't specify what the safety course is. Jesus Christ. I'm like, okay. I go, by the way, I'm, you know, I am a range safety officer, you know? So he goes, oh, you may be okay. I go, yeah, but who knows? Right. So again, they're keeping doing these things. And now the irony of all of this is that you've got the anti gun or we could tin for a hat to shit. So you got the anti gun people, gun control people that are looking for more training. What is the number one training organization in the U S the National Rifle Association. So the NRA is actually, they're pushing business to the NRA because we pay for these courses. Yeah. So think about that. The anti-gun lobby mm -hmm. is putting money in the pockets of the NRA. Of the NRA. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah.